And if they expect me to walk away from Luton with nothing, I'll make very sure there's nothing to walk away from. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the Oak Road Hatter podcast following, I'm going to say yesterday's, but we're recording a day late, following Saturday's 2-1 victory against Crystal Palace, the first home league victory at Kendall Road for this Premier League campaign. Helping me dissect it, of course, got Jimmy Castle, but today we've got a Oak Road Hatter Davidson in Finley Cannon. Finn, how are you getting on? Yeah, I'm good. It's a pretty fun time to be a Luton fan at the moment so it's good to get you on this it's a good one to come on for um talking about our first home Premier League victory um yes a lot to unpack Jamie how are you yeah good I think the overriding feeling is is relieved I think on this Monday evening after what could have been a, a tough draw or defeat based on performance but no it's really just to get to get, to get three points and and Finn's got it easy. His, his first pod, Luton home in the Premier League, you, you don't get much better than that, do you? Well, hopefully it's not a sign of things to come and have to come <laughs> every week we win if I'm on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start today with a bit of too good, too bad. You came through in your numbers as you typically do and we'll start with LTFC Dave, whose two good elements are it was an incredible individual performance. There was incredible individual performances, sorry, all over the pitch. And there was good mentality to recover from being pegged back. He's too bad. Switched off after scoring a first. Need to stop doing that. Hart still hasn't recovered after all that injury time. It was that, that 12 minutes of pure chaos. Jamie, I don't know about you, but that 12 minutes felt more like a, a half of a half. It was that long. Yeah, um, I guessed it It could have been eight or nine, but 12 was just ridiculous. And then it wasn't 12, it was 13 and a half as well, because of whatever reason he he saw fit in terms of adding the extra minute and a half. It, yeah, it, it went on forever. And being behind the, the, the Kenny goal for that Jefferson Lerma header off the post, your heart almost sinks. Um, but I think that that at that point, at that moment, I I, I believed. I think it, it it that that just showed it was our our fate to win that game. Um, so it may have not helped the old ticker, but yeah, I think I think fate just just meant that that the three points were just always going to be ours. Je- Jefferson Lerma hasn't had the best of experiences at that end of the Kenny because if if I remember right, Cal Naismith's goal against Bournemouth, yeah. That, that, Two one victory. It was him that came sliding in. Yeah. Um, so yeah, not a good afternoon for well for, for Lerma then or that game I was speaking about then. But we'll go on to good old Steve Castle, whose two good elements were first home win and subs made the difference. Too bad referee in brackets again and conceded straight away. And it was that element of conceding straight away, Finn. That's just it, it was just pretty much the same image but the other side of that that Burnley game where you know the elation of scoring just quickly so quickly wiped away with a bit of brilliance but also something that was avoidable I mean there could be goals of the season contenders or just a race for goal of the season just from goals equalising after we score or (laughs) scoring straight after we score it really just sucks all the energy out of the Luton fans especially after you've just scored it was horrible, horrible. It, it was the fact that it was like a mirror image, of course, different ends yeah. of the pitch when, when Bryn Larson scored. But it was just, 
you just thought, where's our luck? Where is our luck? But of course, it didn't matter in the end because we we went on and secured that victory. Going on to J.H. Hatter, his first good element was Ross Barkley. We'll go and talk more about him when we get into our own analysis, but certainly one of the good points, that is for sure. And then leading after being pegged back, bad elements, and we'll, we'll speak a little bit about this, Jamie. Um, Bell isn't a left wing back, and the other one was Pelly. as much as it kills me, isn't anywhere near Premier League quality. So, so speaking on those two players, Bell, it was obviously Bell, um, it was done up twice with, with Elise's goal. Um, I think it's harsh, though, dismissing him after coming back from, from injury. Um a lot of his minutes in recent Luton Town history has have come in that that left sided centre back role. So to go to the left wing back position might take some time getting back to to what we know he can do. Yeah, I think you have to apply the context of sort of back from a fairly lengthy injury. So there was going to be that element of rust there and just getting up to speed. I think the performance it's tough because you, you you compare it to having Alfred Doughty there the whole time and he's just not he's just not Alfred Doughty. So there's no point compa- even comparing him to Alfred Doughty because they can see he's just a different player. Um, I get tactically why Rob, Rob Edwards did it because Michael Elise, their biggest threat, showed exactly why he was their biggest threat in terms of the goal. Um, so I think that, that there was a few factors that, I mean, probably to the eye made it look like it was the worst performance than it actually was. I don't think he played too badly. Um Bar the goal, did a decent job on Elise. Um, for me, I I don't agree with it tactically. I think Alfie Doughty has been one of our best players this season, so I I think you have to keep him in that left wing back role. Well, I think you have got to put your best players in in the best positions. So for me, I want to see him start in every game at left wing back going forwards. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, think long term, will we see Amari Vale play more than five games out this season? Um, well, hopefully not, because if we, if we do, then that means there's a lot of injuries to contend with. But I think by and large, we'll, we'll see him in that left left centre back role. Um, so I think, yeah, fairly harsh to, to, to call... To, 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 fairly harsh to, to say that about Bell after that first game. On Pelly, yeah, I think that's completely harsh as well. Um, he, again, he's not he's not in the camber, so he, he, you can't compare to... The player that is usually in that position, um, Pelly is much more of a box to box rather than a sort of a, a, a ball winner that, that, that Nakamba is. I think he's done absolutely fine compared to ha- how he was at Brighton. Again, he, he's he's come on leaps and bounds, and he definitely. I mean, I, I'm not going to say he's a, a good Premier League central midfielder, but he's he's certainly a developing one. He's he's learning and he's and he's adapting in a midfield two against a very strong midfield three that they had in terms of Takure. Um, Lerma and Eze, like it's, it's it's not a, an easy midfield to to to, to play against um, alongside a Ross Barkley, who himself isn't really a, a destroyer in that midfield. He's he's more of a of a playmaking type. So, given the circumstances, I thought he did he did absolutely fine. I think if if you give him more support, I think he will thrive thrive a lot more. Like if that was a midfield three, let's say if if that was a the Camber and Pelly double pivot with Barkley in the ten, I think he will thrive a lot more and he will have a bit a bit more freedom and, and luxury to go forwards. Um so yeah, I think that that's that's equally harsh and I think you have to apply a, a, a lot of circumstance and, and context to, to to the performance before you say anything too negative about it. Uh, moving on to Daniel Jackson, his good elements of the game were Barkley and Mengi. His bad was Clark was quite rusty. Um, Clark, obviously, play he, he, him himself is coming back after a very lengthy injury. He came on against United the other week, but it's good to have Clark back. Then we 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 know the quality he possesses. Um, you've seen it in a recent training video as well, where where he just oozes class. It's going to take some time, just like what we're saying there with, with Pelly, with Bell. It's going to take some time with these players because you think of when Clark was in the team, you think of when Bell was playing. We've gone up level since that, so it's going to be quite difficult adapting to the Premier League and adapting to, to what is what we have to call a, a new standard at Luton Town. Absolutely, and Clark offers something pretty different to any of our other midfielders. He's quick on the ball, he moves it quickly and he gets about and getting back up to speed after being out for so long, it's obviously going to take a bit of time. 
but you can never really fault his work rate. Even if he's not winning the ball, he's still working to get back and working hard defensively to help out the other players around him. So I think give him time and he'll be right up to speed because he's developed every time he's gone anywhere. Yeah, and I think a good thing with that as well is that, you know, we've got three players there um, that will have benefited lots with the game time that they've got against Palace and, and I guess the mentality of, you know, that goal going in, Elise scoring and, and us as a team showing that mentality, being a part of the, the 11 that was on at the time is going to be, it's going to be massive. Um, let's move on to the last one. Josh Hammond, who has said for his two good elements, Ross Barkley and Ross Barkley, and then two bad elements. Referee, again, incompetent. Pelly isn't good enough. We'll touch on Ross Barkley, as we said, during during our own analysis of the game. But but going into the refereeing situation, Jamie, we, want, we try and keep our mouth shut as much as possible. Um, what do you think? Do you think it was... I felt it was very stop start, and then obviously that twelve minutes at the end just just was ever, it's topped off everything for me. Um, yeah, what, what do you make? Do you think the referee was was one of the better ones we've seen at Kenilworth Road this season, or, or the the standard we've come to expect? It's just the consistency. I've, that that is always the overarching theme for me. Um, in in terms of comparing past referee performances you almost just forget what was what nowadays in terms of what bad decision was what game because there's every game is there's something so it's tough to draw comparisons between the performances they're all just in that same category um it's just when there's fouls committed by us on them and and it's 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 given and then the same thing's done in reverse and it's just not given or something that we're getting yellow carded for, they're not, I mean, I don't know how many cards we got on Saturday, but it was certainly, what, five, six maybe. Um, but Kaminsky right at the end, what, 90 plus five, when you could, you probably could, could have booked one of their players for, for doing the same thing. Um, it, sh- it just gets a bit exhausting to talk about, to be honest. I don't want to talk about it too much. It's just, I, I just don't see what some of these re- referees do. Um, there was one as well from, from the Lino where the ball was clearly out of play for, for, for a throw in. Like it, like the, the Lino had to dive back to move out of the way of the player, and the ball went behind him, and he still didn't didn't wave for, for a throw in. It's just like what 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 you seeing? Um, so yeah, it's just frustrating, and I don't want to drink. I don't want to bring the mood down of what should be a very upbeat pod after a first home win. So I'm going to leave it there. But come on, FA, sort it out. Yeah, let's let's avoid any more referee chat. Let's go on to to what the result means first and foremost. Finn, just looking at the Premier League table now, bridged a four point gap from the relegation places, and you know at any point of this season to to say we'd be four points clear of the bottom three in the in England's top flight. It's just incredible at the moment and, and just such a good weekend when you when you apply the context of how the results went elsewhere. Very good weekend to be a Luton Town fan. Yeah, it's massive. Obviously, the results elsewhere for Sheffield United and Everton particularly went, went our way pretty much across the board and Burnley as well, losing it late on. It was great to see that at full time and the goals and the timing of those goals. Um it is massive and it's dragged the teams around us and the teams above us as well into it a bit. They're only three, four points off us now, a few different teams. And even Palace now look like they could have some problems with Eze out and Decore out and who knows what's going to happen to them. I mean, Elise did look brilliant, but can he carry their team until they're back? I really don't know. It's one one player out wide compared to a hard-working Luton team who are going to cover every blade of grass. It is massive. It just... As you alluded to there, Finn, just looking at that that table now, you you look at you know the bottom three: Burnley four, Everton four, Sheffield United five, us on nine, and then Bournemouth, Fulham, Forest, Palace, Wolves, all 12, 12, 12, 12 13, 15, 15. It's getting quite tight, and a victory like that changes the landscape completely. Jamie, you, you just as Finn says, you look at some of the teams that that are. You know, thought they were very much clear of being dragged into the relegation battle. They're not sitting as tight now. Uh, sorry, it's not sitting as as 
pretty as they first were because you know teams like Luton are showing that they can win Premier League matches against you know a team that that are, are, are established are of good quality. Yeah, and and it shows exactly why the the game at the weekend for us was must win. I think if we don't win that, say we draw it, that puts us on seven and Palace on 16. So that's a nine point gap. And OK, you've still got 20 games to go, but nine points is is a lot to overcome, especially for a team that's fighting for every single point. Um, and it's all about bringing those those teams into it. And then even beyond that, those teams you mentioned, you've got Brentford on 16 and we've got them at the weekend. So look at what a win could do there. That that will make that 12 and 16. And suddenly Brentford, who are... Uh, you would say firmly safe in the mid table are, are only four points ahead of us, um, which it j- just shows how things can change in a matter of weeks. Um, and there's a lot of discourse. I mean, I think harsh on Sheffield United, but they're, they're down. Like, it's, 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 hard, it's hard to take. Burnley finding it difficult. Big game against, for them against Sheffield United. It's probably losers relegated in, in that game. Everton. I think are good enough to stay up and probably will stay up, but the minus 10 hurts them. Bournemouth looking like they've turned a bit of a corner, but I think three, four weeks ago, you'd say that they're firmly in the mix. In the mix. Fulham, who knows? I mean, I, I called it early in the season, but they're, they're looking like they could be in danger. Big game tonight, so potentially by the time this airs tomorrow morning, they, they could have beat Wolves and, and it sort of puts them in a bit of daylight. Um Palace, as Finn said, lost to Cool Race six months. As they could be out for a while, saw a link be- between Gay and Man United in January. So that that suddenly that's three big players of their of their eleven that's out, um, and it shows how how quickly things can change. And I think you can't undervalue stability. If if we're being honest with ourselves, we all love our our players at the minute, but how many clubs are going to come in for our players in January? Not. I, not not many. I I don't see many many players getting a, a bigger move than us at the minute in terms of the January window. So looking ahead into January, we're a fairly stable club and we're only going to get better based on signings that we make. Whereas as players or the team, sorry, in that mix, that certainly could get worse than they are. Um, Palace, Fulham being being two of those. Um, so I'm I'm happy just to sit here, just enjoy the season, and just keep picking up points here and there. And for me, as, as long as we're still in it come January and, and we strengthen, I'll, I'll be very positive about our our chances. And yeah, it's all about trying to keep those teams in touch and distance. And for me, obviously, we'll get onto the Brentford preview on, on, on Thursday. But for me, that game is a must not lose. You just got to keep Brentford just within arm's reach because um, who knows what can, what can happen to them come come January as well with Tony potentially going and, uh, and whatnot. So interesting times it's it's it almost adds a bit more excitement because in the championship your, your your teams that are winning and getting three points most weeks and it's a bit like oh what are teams going to drop points but when you're dealing with so few points like three points or or, or back-to-back wins can just change the game uh so back-to-back wins for us come the come saturday 5 p.m you're thinking well we're, we're looking really good um so no it's really exciting and we'd be Derby's record uh, record tally if we do pick yeah. up three points next week. Um, yeah, dealing early blows to all those all those people on Twitter that that considered us the worst team the the Premier League's ever seen. So that'll be that'll be a first nice um, objective to to smash through. Well, we're going to head into a short break. When we're back, we'll continue our analysis of Saturday's two one victory against Crystal Palace. We are back talking all things Luton Town 2, Crystal Palace 1, the first home Premier League victory of the campaign. It doesn't get any worse saying that. It's brilliant to talk about three points in this in this top-tier campaign. Let's talk about the game itself and, and Finn. I think when breaking the game down, um, it was a real battle in the first half. We were probably far from our best. Was it always going to be a case where it was going to be a real battle and then 
you know, quality eventually prevails? Did you expect a fast loot and start? Did you expect us to, to sit back? Well, what was your expectations? And then sort I of mean, to how it played out. Getting into half time without conceding was massive. And I think it didn't really matter how we performed or what we did in that first half, as long as we had that that to go into the second half of, I think it really just added so much to it. And then seeing, obviously, it's horrible seeing players get injured, but it was massive for us on the pitch when Eze and Decore went off. They were huge players for them. Um, so I don't know if it was, it didn't really matter about a fast start. It would have been nicer to see some more chances in the first half, especially sat in the Kenilworth Road end. It would have been nicer to have some efforts coming our way that weren't from Crystal Palace. Um, but, I think generally it was what we needed to just be resilient, resolute in that first half and keep them out and just have a good platform for going into the second half where we could really push forward a bit more. And it's what we've done a lot this season. After the 60-minute mark, we've really caused more of a problem for teams slightly later on when we've got pace out wide. We can take advantage of the players struggling for struggling for energy a bit, I guess. I mean, Mitchell looked re- like he was really struggling against Townsend and Doherty in the first half. So just running at him and giving him a real horrid time down that side was massive for us. And I guess with that as well, um, what you mentioned there, plus sort of 60 minutes becoming more effective as an attacking unit, as a pressing unit. I think I saw a stat the other day that, that within the last 15 minutes of games, we've, we've outscored opponents 8-6 or something like that. So it just shows how valuable those sort of closing 15 minutes are I guess fitness levels as well mentality is the kind of it's the kind of stats you want backing you up when you know not gonna shy away from the fact that we're going to be continue to be in a relegation battle this season those kind of uh, data points are, are brilliant for for what we're trying to achieve Jamie yeah um completely agree and I, I, I think <laughs> It's tough because I, I I agree. I think the performance, especially in the first half, was wasn't good enough. I think for me, Bar Burnley was probably our worst performance of the season in general. Um, I think there's a lot of context to apply. I think missing the was huge. Missing Kabore is huge. Playing Doughty not in his best position is I think was was wrong. And yeah, I mean I think the the setup was very much to make sure we got to the latter stage of the game at least in it to then be able to to try and get the three points from there and obviously with with the the, the hindsight hat on I think you think well well done like you think well done Edwards because you got the three points and ultimately that's all that matters um, I think ideally you played Doughty on the left left footed I think because that right side was Townsend and and Doughty both sort of wanting to cut in on the left, on the right-hand side, and that could stifle us way too much. Um, but as you say, uh, it, it was all about staying in the game. And I think if we take every game this season at Kenworth Road to the last 15 minutes and it's nil nil, I back us to, to to do everything we can to try and get all three points. I, I, I think m- most of us would, it will, would, would shake hands this season for every home game to, 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 to be nil nil with, with, with 15 to go. Um, because that means we're in it and we have every chance of of, of getting the points. Um, so yeah, I think it's tough to be overly critical because it's our first home game. I think there's a lot we can do better, but fundamentally, as you as you say, the work rate, the press, there's something that that you can always rely on those boys having on the pitch is is just the the the, the will and the want to to do the best they can for our football club, and and that's why we love them so much because that's that's all we ask for as fans. Um, so and, and yeah, you, you see what he meant to the players. Mengi to get his first. I think he, I think it was his first senior goal, but at least his first Premier League goal. Brown first Premier League goal. Um, so lots of great great news stories. It, sort of to, to to delve into beyond the whole three points at, at home. Um, so I think if we stay up, that for me will be the number one reason why we do is because we we stay in games and 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 we work our nuts off. Um, so it's it's only in the grand scheme of things a positive. And you mentioned there a, a lot of personal achievements within that game. The one that has to be next has to be Thomas Kaminsky getting a clean sheet. I feel so sorry for the man, <laughs> how he hasn't kept one yet. He, he's done everything in his power, uh, but but Finn, it just hasn't come yet. But that doesn't take away from from how brilliant he, he has been for us, and, and particularly looking at that Palace game. 
very, very effective and, and a number of crucial saves to, to you know, ensure that we, we took all three points. And that double save in the first half was just unbelievable. The second one, how he got to that, I have no idea. He's really just putting himself in the picture for everyone to see. He's such a bargain. And you saw how much it meant. Even though he didn't keep a clean sheet at full time, Lockyer went straight over to him and leapt in his arms. And you don't see that from many to other teams when they get a 2-1 victory. You don't see your defender just jumping on the keeper. And I think everyone knows how good Kaminsky is. You hear him, his name being shouted throughout the game. Anytime he makes a save, anytime he just claims the ball in the air, everyone loves him now. And he, he did have a slightly shaky start, but he's turning out to be one of the signings of the season. His reactions are just insanely good. I could never do it. I've not done my research, but I I think it's a fairly good statement that he's the best ever Premier League goalkeeper to have not kept a clean sheet. Uh, I, I think I think that's a that's a fairly confident statement to make. I ridiculous. Um, yeah, as Finn said, double save, incredible. Um, I think he's getting better in general play. His, his kicking's getting better. His confidence on the ball's getting better. He's catching more than than, than he used to rather than punching. Um, yeah, so for what, what we believe to be two and a half million pounds, what a snip. And it's not going to be too long until some some pundit who doesn't do his research says Luton need to improve their goalkeeper because it's zero clean sheets, insert Garth Crooks or someone like that. Uh, but yeah, back to back to his performance and everything he's contributing at the moment. Obviously, shot stopping's there for everyone to see, but as Jamie, as you say there, it's everything else in his game that, that seems to be improving game upon game and he's just reached a level now where he's become so dependable and, and you know, that, that double save, a couple of the other saves are becoming, um, dare I say, it routine. And that's when you know you've got an incredible goalkeeper on your hands. Um, a fantastic performance from him. Another player who had a very, very good day, Ross Barkley. Um, I was saying off air that that pass, um, there's so many goals this season that, that you want to watch back to back. But it's not too often where, where passes that don't really lead to anything um, get you watching on repeat but that one to, to Alfie Doherty in the first half unbelievable but but generally his, his performance was fantastic Finn are we starting to see the very best of, of Ross Barkley again oh he's he's brilliant he's in that six role as well that six that eight role he's not really played there I've never seen him play there for Everton or Chelsea in that holding role where he can ping the ball, ball wide and drive forward I think he's just showing a complete different level to his game to what people expected from him those first couple of games, he didn't really look up to full fitness. But since then, he's just absolutely grown every single game. And he seems to get it as well. After the game, he applauds the fans more than any other player now, which is what some people had a few grievances about early on. Um, but he he gets it and he's filming Pelly on his Instagram story. Like He clearly loves to be part of that team. He's been out in the community with the club in the well, today, I think. So it's just massive having a player with that experience and that ability on the ball. He's someone who's going to pick out a player and a run from Alfie Doherty down the left or down the right, or just a Carlton Morris will find him and let him hold the ball up. He's just has that quality on the ball and playing the ball as well. He certainly has been fantastic. Jamie, was that the best game you've, we've seen from Ross Barkley since he signed for the Hatters? Um, it seems he's been getting better and better and he's, he's grown in stature and importance and is you know, quickly become one of the first names on the team sheet. Do you think that was his best game in the town shirt? I think it was certainly his most mature game. I think there's been a few games where I've I've spoken about him when others haven't, and I thought he, he was he's been as good in those games. But given the context of knowing the Campbell alongside him, it was a, a more mature performance. He had to he had to really tactically and structurally be spot on, and he was and. No, no one doubted his on the ball ability when we signed him, but there was a few doubts in terms of fitness, work rate, just his general physicality, and then defensively whether he could really fit in that that Luton side, that Luton press, and and that's the side of his game that I'm becoming really impressed with. Obviously, on the ball, as you say, that pass to Doughty, absolute mustard, like for one of the best, if not the best 
technical players we've had on the on the books of Lewin, especially in, in my Lewin sport in life. Um, so yeah, again, a, a free transfer, incredible. Um, and you're just starting to be really excited about the, the, the team and the form that players are starting to get and really, really sort of get into grips with the level when Barkley never needed to get to grips with the level because he's made, made so many appearances already at the level. But to get to grips alongside the others in the way they are, um, is really positive. Um, and just, I can't wait to w- watch him. He's, he's just an exciting player to watch. You, like, Whenever he's on the ball, you think, is he going to twist left, twist right? Is he going to going to find someone out wide? And yeah, he's it's, it's just, just a joy to watch, especially the Kenny on that tight pitch. It's just, it's just the way he just, just dictates the, the players. It's just, it's, it's just so good. And you mentioned there he's not having to adapt to Premier League football. Of course, he's had plenty of experience, but he's having to adapt to, to a different style of play, a different way of operating, um, different, I guess, type of teammates as well in, in terms of this season being about the battlers and, and the grinders in the team, um, about pressing effectively. But then it's also about that quality on the ball, which he, he brings in abundance. And yeah, the last few games, he has been absolutely superb. I think there were there were a lot of individual performances that were very good, but I think also um, Chio Bene. We joke that we don't really need to say it anymore because you just expect a, you know, an eight out of ten plus kind of performance from him each week, which is incredible considering again a free transfer. Tina Mengi as well, obviously got the opener. Um, I think he was absolutely incredible with the back, winning the majority of his duels. But his reading of the game really, really impressed me from a 21-year-old who, you know, has not too much experience. Um, definitely not Premier League experience anyway. Um, I thought he was he was incredible. Is there any other players, Finn, that that you des- you think deserve a little special shout out after after the performance they turned in? I mean, Townsend again when he's on the pitch. He obviously only lasts an hour or so. But his pressing when he's on, he just leads that press from the front. He knows when to press and he charges down the keeper. He charges down the defenders and gives them no time on the ball. And I think it's just worth looking at that, what that adds to the team and how that really helps to the rest of the team. He knows when to start that team press. And then another one who does come under a bit of criticism, Adebayo, off the bench. I'm sure he came on, was expecting to be on for five, ten minutes. And then 12 minutes of added time comes on and he is just putting in such a shift, giving the defenders on the ball for Palace no time late on and making sure that we were able to have that platform to sit, have our defence and our midfield set behind the ball while he's, whilst he put the pressure on. And I've seen some weeks we see him, he doesn't really put that press, press on. He holds the ball up or stays up front waiting for the ball to come to him. So clearly when he's been told to do that, it really does work. Yeah, it's an interesting point with Adebayo because he does work incredibly hard. And I think it's clear to see when he's under the instruction of press and harry everything compared to, you know, hold your shape and choose the right moments to press. I think sometimes that gets lost in translation and, and um, sort of sections of the fan base take that as laziness. But I think it's more tactical instruction. I think it has to be. Um, going on to... Michael Elise goal, um, we mentioned it earlier, fantastic bit of individual skill twice. Um, it was a reminder that we are in the Premier League after the, the celebrations of the, the Mengi goal. It was a reminder that, that teams in this division have so much individual quality and, and they can produce moments of magic like that. Um, obviously, Bell was done up twice. Difficult goal to concede when we apply it to the context of what happened against Burnley and it was conceding again. It was that same feeling. But sometimes when he got into that position, you just have to appreciate the quality that, that so, so, well, some teams, I say most teams in in the Premier League have, Jamie. Yeah, it's a ridiculous goal. I think obviously the finish in itself is is fantastic and Lockyer tries to jump and head it and it goes just literally, it's almost pinpoint over his head. He, he almost uses Lockyer as, as a dummy. Kaminsky's getting nowhere near it, despite how good he is. Um, so you have, to, you have to praise Olise. It's a crazy goal and then the build-up to it. I think it, it comes into him for Joe Ward and he almost sort of fakes to go right and then thinks it was left foot round Bell to then get round him. 
Bell sort of thinks he's pity pins him in and he's like another bur- the burst of pace down the side. In truth, Bell probably just needs to put him in, in the main stand, doesn't he, really? Um, but yeah, I, I think you have to give all, all the credit to what he's saying. It, it's just really frustrating. Um, and especially in the context of when there's no Eze on the pitch, you probably need to double up on Elise even more because um, we know exactly the sort of quality that that, that that he can provide. So maybe something to look at from Edwards and staff in terms of w- w- what what do we do differently when we can sit, or when we score a goal? Like, is is there something that that we change? Um, so that's what one for them to take away because it just drains the energy. I mean, like the the the, the celebration to go one nil up when you think it's finally our day, like we're finally going to get three points to then less than a minute. I don't know the exact time, but it seems it seemed like less than a minute later. It's back to one one, and you think oh, not again. Um, so yeah, I mean, thankful that we managed to go on and get the second, but it's just yeah, it it, it does kill you a bit. And then, obviously, he made the uh, decision after all that brilliance at one all to, to shish the crowd and then the rest writes itself and it, it gives us a nice little uh, talking point here. Um, when you go one all and the game is finally balanced, shushing the crowd is not really the best idea, Finn. I mean, the Kenny gets lively as it is. It's pr- louder than a lot of the other grounds in the Premier League. I'm sure if he went over to another set of fans in the Premier League and shushed them. I mean, they probably would have been quiet anyway. But coming to the Kenny and shushing the crowd, after you've equalised, not even gone ahead, I think everyone's going to get on your backs then. And it probably lifts the Luton players a bit as well. He's wound up the fans, which then translates onto the pitch as well. I mean, he's a brilliant player. And when he's doing stuff like that, he has every right to celebrate how he wants. A strike like that, you don't see it every week. And he probably thought he had goal of the season contender. And then... One day later, Garnacho goes and pulls out the insane. So he's been shushed a bit by Garnacho there, I think, <laughs> after doing that and then had that happening the following day. But yeah, I think in the context of the game, I think it was massive for Luton that he wound up the fans. Maybe not over on the other side of the stadium, but everyone in the Kenilworth Road end and on in the main enclosure area knew what he'd done and were really riled up by that and then got behind the team even more. And then the celebrations at full time, I think you could tell it was almost relief and a release of frustration at what happened earlier on. And you say there, shushed by Garnacho. Another player who was shushed by was Jacob Brown, who eventually got the winner. Very, very happy for Jacob Brown because obviously there's been a few missed opportunities um, during like the early stages of his Luton career. Um, he's had, I guess, a little bit of difficulty in front of goal. I think he needed that. I think confidence-wise, he needed that. But also, making that run, um, he he's not reserved. He will continue making those runs into the box and being brave out of possession, which is great to see. And he was rewarded by it. Um, Chiag Bene putting the ball into the box. Anderson and Johnston between them didn't really know what was going on. And, and that's all to the benefit of Jacob Brown, who tapped home. Um, it was a it was a weird goal because I didn't know whether to praise Chio too much. I didn't know whether to pra- praise uh, Brown too much. But I think you have to pin a lot of the blame on on the Palace defence, well, the, the miscommunication between Johnston and Anderson. But I don't care. We we won the game because of that. And um, yeah, Brown is off the mark in the Premier League, Jamie. Yeah, delighted for him. Um, I think almost. In contrast to Barkley, there there was no doubting whatsoever his sort of work rate off the ball and in the press. I think that's one thing he's added a lot to our game when he had that that one of starts. Um, one thing that has been doubted is his ability on the ball and in terms of his, his end product. And he he showed obviously it's it was it was the sort of the, the, the that last minute dart into the box to get on the end of a cross, but it's still that will and that want to to, to get on the end of it and. Bill, you sat two rows behind me. There was one one moment in the first half where Doughty crossed the ball in for Morris, and he didn't even try to to, to sort of have that dying one that dying one in the box, and that that almost got my back up a little bit. And it just shows you, you all you want is a player used to try, um, and and that's what Brown did. So big kudos to him, and he's got his just awards as that first top flight goal. Um, or Ben A, you mentioned it in terms of his performance was really good and. I think for me, it just shows the the impact of playing some players on their best side. Like Doughty, when he's played on his left, I think Ogbené 
as good as he's been on that left that left inverted winger row, I, I would love just to see him on on that right side on on a stronger foot because he has that that end product and that ability. If he can, if if he was running at Mitchell game and and was able to put crosses in, I think we'd have had a lot more joy. Um, so um, incredible ball, uh, yeah. I think you you point your fingers at Anderson and 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 Johnston, but the ball gives them the doubt of shit. Who goes for it? Anderson is a fantastic centre half, probably one of the best outside the top six teams, um, and he he just he just doubts himself for just even that two second that that delay where he's like, no, Johnson, it's yours, and then last minute last minute you might think actually no, it is mine, but it was just too late. Johnson as well was sort of stuck on this line because it was far enough out for him to not come for it. Um, so yeah, obviously big 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 sort of claims for Palace fans in terms of bad defending but yeah I think you have to praise the ball as well in terms of that uncertainty that it puts on the, on the defenders um, and then the scenes after just to get the three points um, so all round a special goal and will probably firmly be in in the archives of goals at, at, at Kenworth Road in terms of what, what they've mean for the club and Finn Rob Edwards is a manager that us Luton Town fans are obviously very proud of having at the club. But just everything he says, everything he does, um, you know, he, he's just it just seems he does the right thing, the perfect thing. And even in his post-match comments, he alluded to the fact it was a perfect result, but he said it was far from the, the perfect performance. And I guess as Luton fans, that, that fills you with hope that, you know, this isn't the top, this isn't the pinnacle. There is so much more to come this season. I mean, he's such a professional and he's such a respectable person in everything he says. The way he composes himself, the way he presents himself in the media and the way he is with the Luton fans, everything about it is, I mean, perfect, I guess. Um, and he is right. It wasn't an amazing performance, but when you're getting that result from not playing your best, I think that's huge and that says a lot about the character within the team. Um, his substitutions in that game were massive. The subs really changed the game for us and um, I don't know how many other managers would have had those subs in their locker or had the, um, the choice to bring them on at that time or decided to go for it and put those attackers on. Um, and even after the game, I say about managers showing respect to the opposition, Hodgson did that for us. And I think Edwards just has this character about him where you can't dislike him, even for probably opposition fans, it's difficult to dislike him at times. Maybe a Watford fan might not like him, <laughs> but everyone else seems to love him. That is for sure. That is everything for today. A big thank you to Finn and Jamie for coming on. A big thank you to everyone else watching and listening at home. We'll be back on Thursday for the Brentford preview. Another big Premier League clash where points are certainly available. Um, of course, on socials, we are Oak Road Hatter. Um, absolutely everything for uh, Instagram where we're Oak Road Hatter Pod. Please continue to support the YouTube channel as well. Again, Oak Road Hatter, like this video, subscribe, and we'll be back on Thursday for the rest of the video. Goodbye.